Josh with Denver Comic Con, and I'm here with Liv Hat Hatton. <laughs> ah, how are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? I'm very well. Has the show been well for you so far? Yeah. I, I always love coming here. If, if anything, the costumes alone are good enough, but there's so many amazing artists and other kinds of creators here. There's no shortage of things to look at. Yeah, that's for sure. For sure. Well, what are you uh, showing here this weekend? Yeah. So, of course, my book, In the Mind of Revenge, doing that as well. And I'm also starting to talk to people about my book, Counting Bodies Like Stars. That's out in spring of 2019 um, through Literary Wanderlust. And I'm getting so, so excited about that one. Well, what can you tell us about that? Yeah, it's a sci-fi adventure. It's got a it's got a similar theme to the first book in that the main character is trying to avenge her family, so there's a, a revenge theme there. But other than that, it's light years away from, from that. I've got a, a female protagonist. She's a bounty hunter, total badass. Uh, been avoiding her um, emotions and the reality of her family being dead by going on this revenge quest, essentially, to get the, the bad guy that did it. And through all of that, she ends up having to, of course, save the galaxy. Um, she may or may not realize that there are things besides revenge to live for through a love interest. And it's, it's fun. It's a lot of world hopping, a lot of really cool time travel stuff, and of course alien planets and alien species and really cool technology. Well, where, where do all these ideas come from? Do you, is there inspiration that you're drawing from, or is this stuff that you just have cooking in your head? I think it's both. I think I see things that inspire me all the time, and then somewhere in the back of my brain, in that like creative center, I'll just kind of, normally it happens in the middle of the night or when I wake up, you know, I'll have, my ideas come to me either in the form of dialogue or a character, and I just can't stop thinking about them. That's how I know when I need to write it, if it's just like constant, I can't stop thinking. I'm like, oh yeah, this is an idea that really needs to be born by me specifically. Yeah. Uh, when, you, when you wake up having those dreams, is it something that you jot down right away, or is it something that you kind of... Oh, that was that was a thing, and we'll have to get back to that. Yeah, if if I think, oh, that's a great idea, and I can't fall back asleep because I can't stop thinking about it, then I absolutely write it down. Um, I try not to do that though because I don't want to ruin my sleep patterns, and I don't sleep with my phone by my bed. So to make a note, I have to like get up, go to my phone, open my, and then I'm just like awake. So I really stick to. I think it was James Patterson that said this, and I thought, oh, that's probably great advice. He said he used to when he was a really young writer, everything that came in his head, he would make sure to write it down, and he had the same thing. In the middle of the night, you know, 2:30 a.m., an idea would come, and he felt compelled, like he had to write it down because every idea he had had to be a golden idea. Well, the older he got, the more he realized, no, the ones that stick with me, those are the ones that I, I need to write. Those are the ideas for me. And so I, I try to go by that. If it's stuck and I can't go back to sleep without writing it down, then I write it down. If I can fall right back asleep, probably wasn't my idea anyway. Yeah. Do you ever find that uh, when you start writing something that you are actually writing somebody else's story or something that's too similar where you actually stop and go, ah, that's a little too similar? Yeah, that has happened to me before. So typically when I get an idea, before I plot anything, I'll kind of just write what comes to me, and that tells me if it's my story or not, and if it sounds nothing like me, then I know, like, I don't want to say I'm channeling someone else, but I think energy transfers, and it kind of came through my energetic field, and it's not my voice, it's not my story to tell, and it'll pass on to the right person. Uh, York, uh, when you sit down to write, uh, I, I'm learning this weekend there's a term, a panther. Yeah. Uh, are you a pantser or whatever the opposite of a pantser is? Yeah, I think there's pantsers and plotters. Okay. I used to be a straight up pantser, which was okay for my first book because it's a limited point of view, it's first person, um, and it's not such a big deal if there are like big plot holes that don't get filled up right away because it's what that character knows at that time. When you deal with a larger cast and you write in third person and you're doing something a little more complicated, becoming a pantser can be difficult. Um, it proved to be difficult for me. It, it really didn't work out. My plot was too complicated. I had too many characters and pantsing made it a lot more rework. And so now I kind of do a little bit of both. I'll do a really loose 10 
scene structure, so the 10 most important scenes, and then obviously like my three big ones, your opener, your climax, and then the conclusion. And I make sure those are really nailed down and I, I know where it's going, and then I kind of just let myself write from there. And if that means I have to adjust some plot points as I go, that's fine, but at least I have a loose structure and I'm not gonna like leave the reader going, wait, she mentioned this and then didn't answer the question and da 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 da. Do, yeah. you, do you find that uh, your fans bring you uh, uh, supposed plot holes or maybe things you haven't quite gotten to yet and say, hey, what about this? I'm convinced that a lot of my readers are smarter than me because some people have pointed some stuff out I did not mean to do on purpose and they're like, I noticed that you said this metaphor and that really goes with this subplot and I think that it's going to play into the overall whatever and you just kind of nod and go, that's a really great idea, thank you so much and I'm going to steal that. Awesome. Crowdsource your ideas, you know? Right, right. Yeah. Um, uh, do you have any panels this weekend? Yeah, I w I'm in eight panels total. I had two yesterday. I have three today and I think four tomorrow. Awesome. Something like that. And where can people find you on the internet and where can people find your books? Yeah, so the best place to follow me is on my website, livehadden.com. Uh, just sign up for my email. You get the first three chapters of In the Mind of Revenge for free. And then I really don't, I don't send regular updates. It's just when something's happening. I don't spam you. You might not hear from me for months and then you'll hear from me twice in a month, but that's about it. If you want to find me on social, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at Liv Haddon. It's L-I-V-H-A-D-D-E-N. <laughs> Honestly, you could just Google me and anything that shows up, you just click Synergy. It. It's all yeah, about synergy. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. It's the way to do it. Well, uh, thank you for taking the time for talking with us yeah. this weekend, and I hope the rest of the weekend goes really well for Sweet. you. Thanks, you too. Thanks.